Hey guys, welcome to Malcolm V8. We're on the final stages of our daily driven roost build on this Fox. We're hoping to wrap this up today and get this thing fired up with the blower. So we still got a few steps to go. You know, we got to still get the actual blower installed. Uh, we got to get the oil line up to it, the drain back down, and we got to build the intercooler lines. That's going to be a big one. So this is going to be interesting. We're going to have to snake these down through here. They're going to come around up through the fender. We're going to have, you know, from the blower to the throttle body, and then we have to build the the intake off of the back of the blower to the air filter in here so that should be an interesting challenge we have a whole bunch of piping we're gonna start cutting and welding and, and see what we can make happen there if you're wondering why this is mounted in here since the last video it's because we installed AC in the car so our plans kind of changed and this since we're doing a bunch of welding down here with the uh, AC condenser actually since the previous video where we installed the bar we had to move the radiator forward so we could squeeze the condenser in you know we changed that plans and you get to redo everything twice <laughs> so and in that process while we we're down here welding all the stuff in we went ahead and just installed the intercooler so if you want to see how we came up with this fitment and how the intercooler works and stuff check out the AC video that'll explain that and, and you'll see how that got installed the other interesting thing is, of course, we now have AC. You may remember our clearance issues with the water pump pulley since we moved the alternator up into a custom location. Now that we have AC, just like we suspected, it sits higher and more over, and we have a huge amount of clearance. Now I can stick my hand between the pulley and the belt there, and that's after about a week of running and racing on this car and ripping on it hard. So it's, it's looking really good. We're in good shape. So we have a lot of work to do to get this done, but I'm excited. We're gonna see if this thing can start up and we can actually hear this blower. So yeah, let's get to it. All right, let's talk oil lines, specifically the return line from the supercharger back to the oil pan. So our particular supercharger is remotely oil fed, meaning we're gonna tap off the oil supply by the oil filter and take pressurized oil. It's gonna feed in, lubricate the unit, and then it has a drain that needs to go back to the pan. Now, ideally, I would like to just weld a bung on the side here and attach our line, have something nice, solid, and reliable on there. The problem is to remove this oil pan on this car means pulling out the entire K-member underneath, all the suspension, everything has to come out of the way so you can pull that pan down. That's a giant job and it's hard to justify just to put a little oil line in there. Or of course you could pull the engine out the top. Again, pulling the whole engine out is a giant nightmare. We don't really want to get into that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and get a fitting like this, uh, except we'll probably use a barbed one, not, not a smooth one like that, but the same concept. It's a 3 8 pipe thread and tap it inside over there. Now, instead of drilling a hole and trying to tap the threads, we, you know, you can't really do that because the metal is so thin, it's stamped metal. You need some surface area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a punch like this and we're, you're gonna put it up on the side and we're gonna hit it with a hammer and you give it a few good whacks and you're literally gonna pierce that metal and start breaking through. And we're gonna just keep hammering it down, making the hole a little bit bigger. And what's, what's gonna happen here is, as you break through, you're bending the metal backwards like that. That's kind of over-exaggerated, but that's the concept. And then, you know, you step up to an even bigger one. You know, you start with a small one, you get your hole going, and you will work up several sizes till we get to one about this size. And you can see the thickness of the shafts really getting up there to where we'll eventually fit this 3 8 tap in there. And as this hole is opened up like that from the metal being hammered and pressed and pulled out like that, now you have a surface area here where you can actually cut some threads in. It's not huge, you'll get just, you know, maybe three threads deep, roughly, two to three going around. But that'll give you enough that you can actually tap that, the um, pan, put this in there, and have something that works. You, you know, use some kind of sealant on the threads. It's a little bit sketchy, <laughs> but a lot of people do it and it does, it does work. It's not my most favorite. If this pan ever comes out, we'll rip that out and weld something in. But to get us going right now in a semi-reliable manner, I think, this is gonna do it. Also, the nice thing about not drilling this is we're not gonna get a bunch of metal shavings inside the pan. Uh, now, when tapping and cutting the threads, there's always a chance for, for shavings at that point, so we're gonna pack this thing full of grease, and we'll show you that when we get there. That'll help really attract and cause any the shavings to stick in the grease. And then we'll use a magnet to clean up the hole, pull anything excess out. And then as a final you know, safety measure, we're just gonna drain the oil and we'll probably flush some oil through this new line that we've attached as well. So anything in here that we couldn't quite get, we'll flush on down and out the pan, put fresh oil in and we should be in good shape. 
Okay, here's what we got going on for the oil feed line going to the supercharger. Essentially what we did was we took the oil pressure sensor on the side of the block and removed it. And we're building something similar to this that's gonna tap into the block, come up, and then we have this AN line that's gonna feed off of here to go up and feed the supercharger. And then the original oil pressure sensor can go in this 45 degree connector on the back. Fairly simple. So yeah, let's go try and get it in there. Okay, while well, under the car trying to install this tube into the block, it quickly became apparent that trying to grip this and turn it with pliers and whatnot was a worthless endeavor. So I'm gonna take this nut. It's pretty close, tight fit there. I'm gonna go ahead and drill it out so that it can just slip onto this tube and then I'm gonna weld it in the center and that'll give me a spot to put a wrench on and snug this in and out. Should fix that right up. Well, that was absolutely insane. We were actually inside the metal building right as lightning strike. Not sure what it hit, but we've lost um, a lot of items, AC in the house, and a whole bunch of electronics all burnt up. So we had a little bit of a delay as we get that repaired and we can get back on this. All right, there's the oil pressure feed all done and completed. That worked out really good with that nut, you know, being able to tighten that and hold it in place while tightening on the T. I went ahead and admitted the 45 here and just put that straight on. Uh, just one less fitting to leak and it all fit just fine. Everything cleared and our hose going up. So the feed side's taken care of. Top side of the feed right here. All right, next we're gonna get our blow off valve put onto our charge pipe. Now I already marked the spot when it was up in the car and we were marking everything up so I know where it goes. It comes with this aluminum mounting piece. You can see it's curved for a pipe. I need to tweak it a little bit but it's going to fit right on there. I'm going to go ahead and bore that out and get, get a hole over here. We'll get that welded on and then it attaches right to your blow off valve like that and there's a bracket that attaches these two together or a clamp rather and it's going to sit right there. So let's go ahead and get started on this. You can see here I didn't open up the hole all the way and that's because I wanted to leave enough metal there to make sure I could get a good weld on there. All right, that looks great. It's all welded on. Now I went ahead and opened up the hole, got it just perfect. Here's my little bead roller. It's pretty handy for putting a bead on the end of your boost pipes. So when the silicon coupler goes on here, the T-bolt clamp can pinch down behind it and it doesn't just blow off under boost pressure. Very important for keeping your hoses on there and making it a lot more reliable. So it's kind of nifty. You've got two pieces right here. It slides in, uh, you crank it down, and then you just you know uh, crank this thing over by hand and you can roll it around and you create these beads. Pretty simple and effective. Now, let me show you where we ran into some problems. On some of these larger, more complex pieces that we've been putting together, we need, still need to put a, a bead on the end here. And the issue you run into is when you put this in here and you try and roll it around, it's gonna catch into the frame. So you can't make a complete revolution to get that to turn. Now, you, we, first, you know, we thought, well, we could just cut this off and re-weld it. But the thing is, we spent so much time mocking this up under the car and getting this angle just perfect. And that involved, you know, installing the bumper and the radiator, the blower, and all the other pipes. A lot went into it, so we really don't wanna break this angle. Another idea we had was, Go to the smooth end here and just cut it off and then grab one of these pre-rolled beads that we'd created and weld it on there. And I suppose that would technically work, but then you'd have this, you know, welded joint right outside your silicon coupler. It looked kind of goofy and just an aesthetics thing that doesn't really work out. So let me show you a solution I came up with. So I went ahead and removed this guy from the vise. It not clamps normally in there. I was trying to think of a way to move my bench vise sort of out in the open so that things could swirl around it and not catch on the stand. Then I realized, hold on, I just need to move this guy out, not the whole entire vise. So I drilled a couple holes in it down the bottom plate and I put some holes 
in a quarter inch plated bar like this. And the idea is now I can, uh, yeah, let me just. So with the bar attached like that, now I can mount it in the vise like this and extend it way out. But of course, your handle on the back is not gonna spin at all. So I needed to create something to accommodate for that. I went ahead and got a tap and die set. This is the part that would normally grab your tap and turn threads in because they have a square sort of chuck, similar to a drill chuck, but it's made to grab onto a square end because all taps are usually square like that. So now that grabs on there and spins it. Go ahead and put it on the vise real quick. Okay, now on the back of the tap set, it takes a 3-8 socket set, which we just hook into a half inch. And now we have a really long socket piece on here. And the second person can be out here holding a curled piece of metal like this. Now we can get beads on irregular pieces like this just fine. Beautiful. Look at that. And there it is, that's all the pipes for the whole system. It looks so simple here, but man, that took a lot of work to create and fab out of nothing from scratch. And remember, our front bumper fits without any cutting or mods whatsoever. That took some work. All right, there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how all this piping and mock-up works before we get the radiator and condenser in and you can't see anything. It has a pretty good view of all the belts, the blower, how all this piping goes together. Start up here, I'll show you from the air filter which we can see right here in the front. It's pointing towards the front of the car. See how it curls around here like that? And that way the uh, fender line still fits in here without any cutting or bending or anything. It clears just fine. So that comes up, feeds right into the blower, straight out of the blower. We got this lower line over here, which feeds into the bottom of the treadstone. And you can see it has the uh, blower valve on it right there. Now there's a reason we put it on here um, pre um, intercooler and not after the intercooler right up by the throttle body like most turbo cars. I'll explain that in a bit. After it goes through this treadstone, comes out the bottom there, curls up and around and feeds into our throttle body. So pretty neat little system. Can't wait to hear this thing fire up. We still got to plumb the oil line and the drain and a few little things to button it up but obviously once the radiator and stuff's in here you won't see anything so I wanted to show you this now. So the reason we run the lower valve pre intercooler on a centrifugal car is because it's open a lot of the time it's blowing air out at idle, part throttle running, uh, you know pretty much out of boost it's, it's open and it's just blowing air out so rather than going through the intercooler preheating it and then dumping it you save yourself all that heat and excess air you just blow it out before the intercooler and that's why it's set up that way. Okay, with our oil line in, now we're gonna go ahead and put a cup here and check that the oil's coming out. We're gonna start the engine without the belt on the blower. It'd be a shame that no oil was actually passing through the system, so let's check it out. Fire it up. All right, here we go. We got the blower belt on. First start. Fire it up. Okay, all the pipes are connected everything's kind of in very exciting so getting almost ready for first start up here all the stuff's in 
we got you know a few loose ends to button up with some wiring and whatnot but it's basically there okay for a finishing touch we need to upgrade that so we got this <laughs> very cool reese had this custom made by a guy who cnc machined it and then our local powder coat shop went ahead and put the colors in there and powder coated it for us oh yeah perfect all right first start go for it fire it up All right, it's getting dark, but uh, we're so excited. We can't resist. We're going to take it for a quick test drive around the neighborhood and see what happens. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's go see what this is like. <laughs> Sounds pretty menacing. <laughs> guys enjoyed we had a lot of fun putting this together we're gonna get this car out and get more videos on tuning and ripping on it if you're enjoying it go ahead and hit like subscribe it really helps us out take care and see you next time